Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea and I'm a vegan foodie traveler. In this vlog, join me on my three-day solo adventure in Bristol where I'll be exploring exciting activities on the hunt for Banksy's iconic street art and indulging in delicious vegan food. But first, I'm having last brunch together with my friend Sonia. She recommends the vegan pancakes at this cafe. These are banana pancakes made with vegan butter, drizzled in orange Suzette sauce, and garnished with coconut yogurt and fresh slices of blood orange. It is hands down the best pancakes I've ever had in my life so far. They also have vegan croissants, so I grabbed two to go, but they are not as good as the one from LPQ. After saying goodbye to Sonia, I am off to Bristol. It is only less than two hour train ride from London. Bristol is known for its rich maritime history, vibrant street art, and as the birthplace of the world famous yet mysterious artist, Banksy. I did to Bristol. It feels weird that I'm just walking in a random town in the UK. I'm staying three nights at Premier Inn, a budget-friendly hotel chain found throughout the UK and beyond. The cost is usually around or less than £100 a night, even in prime locations. This is not bad at all for less than a hundred a night in Bistro and it's near the train station. Got my pret soya latte and I'm now walking to wake the tiger. That is kind of cute and creepy. Wake the Tiger is an immersive art walkthrough experience featuring a series of trippy, interactive installations created by artists, engineers, and visionaires. Then we have ocean, bringing death to a shallow existence. Nature, bringing the outside in, and then my personal favorite, Inferno. The experience kicks off with an eccentric property sale presentation, leading us into an alternate world where our mission oh is to gosh. discover our element wow. guild. This feels like an apocalyptic Diagon Alley. I love it so much. You are encouraged to interact with the props and actors to fully immerse yourself, offering a chance to unleash your inner child and stay curious throughout the experience. It is essentially Bristol's version of Meow Wolf in the US, but on a smaller scale. Let's pick up the phone. I absolutely adore any experiences that offer a mind-bending, surreal journey similar to tripping, without the use of any drugs. These types of immersive experiences seem tailor-made to stoners and psychonauts. The concept is definitely more for adults than for kids. I don't know if kids would enjoy this, they might find it scary. The walkthrough mimics a dreamlike state, where each room acts as a portal to a different realm abruptly shifting you from a science lab to a magical forest in an instant. Wow. You have it in front of you. You deserve your attention. Changing the world means changing the way you experience. After two hours of exploring, I finally reached the end of the experience to get my guild assigned. Turns out I'm Earth, which makes sense since I'm a Capricorn. At the end, they play this video that contains strikingly familiar visuals to anyone who's ever done psychedelic. Overall, I highly recommend this experience to all the creatives and druggies out there.
Near my hotel, I discovered this ruin named Temple Church. Oh. It used to be a church with a rich history dating back to the 12th century. Despite being damaged during World War II, it still stands as a significant historical landmark offering a glimpse into medieval Bristol. For dinner tonight, I decided to go with the liver. For some reason, I just don't feel safe hanging out outside at night in Bristol. My dinner is from Kucha Meze Bar, which serves an all vegan menu of Persian and Middle Eastern food. Oh, what? Oh, God. How am I supposed to eat this? Oh, God. Oh, God. Despite the great reviews, I find the food average. It is time to do my laundry the next morning. If you haven't seen my previous London vlogs yet, I lost the only card I used for traveling while in London, and I don't have any cash on me. So I'm 100% relying on Apple Pay for everything. Finding a laundromat that accepts contactless payment wasn't easy. Thanks to Google Maps, I managed to find one. But even though their machines accept contactless payment, the laundry detergent still requires cash. So I have no choice but to wash my clothes without detergent this time. Oh well, it is better than not washing my clothes at all. So while my clothes are being washed, I use this time to head over to Cabot Tower. Set in the heart of Bristol's Brandon Hill Park, Cabot Tower is a historic tower offering panoramic views of the city. Built in the late 19th century to commemorate John Cabot's voyage from Bristol to North America, it stands as a symbol of the city's maritime heritage. Visitors can climb to the top for a breathtaking perspective of Bristol's urban landscape. Running out of breath. But the view is stunning. Then I walked past this juice bar and decided to get an acai bowl for brunch. It tastes alright, not the best. After moving my washed clothes to the dryer, I walked towards Clifton Suspension Bridge. This is one of Bristol's most recognizable structures. There's an observatory nearby with entrance fee. I didn't go because I assumed the views from the bridge itself would be enough. After dropping my laundry back at the hotel, I head towards Bristol Cathedral for a guided walking tour. The walking tour lasts for two hours covering two miles within central Bristol. It costs 11 pounds per person. It's a great way to delve into the world of street art, history, and architecture. Though I expected to see more of Banksy's art, we only get to see one piece. But it's a significant one. The well-hung lover. Created in 2006 on the site of a former sexual health clinic, it adds a layer of satire and is notable for being the first legal piece of street art in the UK. And thanks to the influence of Banksy, stencil art have become a defining feature of the city. A spooky attraction is the Hatchet Inn. An old pub linked to Pirate Blackbeard is rumored to have doors coated in human skin. Normally, you hear this kind of reverberation if you're inside a specially constructed dome. Here, completely by accident, two buildings either side of us, 302 years old, walls are parallel, not flat, both slightly concave, and you make the noise and it just spirals around in the air. Another interesting fact I learned is that the controversial statue of slave trader Edward Colston was toppled by anti-racism protesters after standing for over 120 years. As I'm getting older, I find myself appreciating guided tours more and more. They're awesome for discovering fun facts and hidden gems I might never find on my own. This Edward Everard building is protected for its historic value and notable Art Nouveau facade. This walking tour has given me a richer insight into Bristol. Beyond its lively street art, every artwork, building, and statue in the city tells a story, shaping Bristol's unique character and identity. After the tour, then it's time for early dinner. I head to this family-owned, fully plant-based pasta restaurant. 
I'm trying their Caesar salad with deep fried nochi, which has a chewy texture similar to mochi, and the chicken nuggets taste super realistic. For my main, I chose their signature carbonara. I love the thick and udon-like pasta. It's very creamy and satisfying. After dinner, I set out to find more Banksy artwork. Nearby, I come across you don't need planning permission to build castles in the sky. It's one of Banksy's simpler works, yet it carries a thought-provoking message. One doesn't need approval to dream big. Next, I head towards Cotham area for two more Banksy arts. This one is called Mild Mild West, depicting a teddy bear throwing a lit up bottle at riot police, a playful yet profound statement on resistance. This area is so scary. I'm scared of drunk young people. Another one nearby is called Rose on a Mousetrap, showing a delicate rose in a trap. As it's getting late, even though it isn't dark yet, I decide to stop my Banksy hunt and continue tomorrow. Heading back towards my hotel, I come across a hookah bar. Taking a break, I indulge in some hookah and a Long Island drink. On the same street, there is this vegan junk food chain. I'm so blown away by their churros. I don't know if it's because I'm tipsy, but these Biscoff churros are out of this world. On to my last full day in Bristol. I start the day with breakfast at a vegan junk food shop in Bedminster. They also have a grab and go grocery section. I'm super thrilled to try vegan Kit Kat for the first time. As a kid, I used to love Kit Kat so much. I'm sad to say the vegan one tastes so dull compared to the original. I also grabbed Vigo, my number one favorite chocolate bar in the world right now. I'm trying their cheeseburger. While the cheese isn't as melty as I'd like, the soya wheat patty is surprisingly juicy and flavorful. After breakfast, I head to this aesthetic coffee shop recommended by my friend Sonia. I order an oat latte here, and it's so creamy and delicious. Coffee snobs would love this place. My hunt for Bexie's artwork then begins as I make my way towards M Shed. M Shed is a cultural museum located on Bristol's harbour site, showcasing the city's history and its people. I'm here specifically to see Banksy's Grim Reaper. It was originally located on the side of a floating nightclub, perhaps hinting the idea that club goers are metaphorically rowing their way towards death. Did you know there's a book made of human skin here at M Shed? The John Horwood book bound in the skin of Horwood himself, who was executed for murder in the 19th century. This book details his crime and trial. It is actually so disturbing to look at in person. As I walk past a steam crane, I take a moment to explore its interior. They were used for loading and unloading cargo in the harbor. So lift, uh -huh. lower, go faster, through engine motion. They are a significant part of Bristol's maritime history, symbolizing the city's industrial past and its role as a major port. <laughs> then I slowly make my way to see Banksy's Girl with a Pierced Eardrum. This artwork parodies Johannes Vermeer's famous Girl with a Pearl Earring, replacing the pearl with an outdoor security alarm. I'm not quite sure how to interpret its meaning, but art can exist for no other purpose than to be entertaining, right? Before coming to Bristol, I had only heard of the name Banksy through BTS members sharing the artworks on social media. But now being in the artist's hometown and experiencing the art firsthand, I've gained a new perspective for Banksy's unique style. The final artwork I get to see on this trip is the Paint Pot Angel at the Bristol Museum and Art Gallery. It's a sculpture of an angel with pink paint dumped over its head. This juxtaposition challenges traditional perceptions of art. In the evening, I notice a long line in front of a gelato shop. My curiosity leads me to join the queue. 
I opt for two vegan flavors. One is bacho, which is chocolate and hazelnut. The other one is mango sorbet. Both are absolutely worth the wait. For my last dinner in Bristol, I feel like eating something British. So I grab a vegan pie to go. I got the moonless moon. It is filled with jackfruit. Ooh, look at that. Mmm, wow. That's good. Four out of five. So that wraps up my three-day trip to Bristol. Here is a breakdown of my total spending, covering the hotel, transportation, activities, and food. I am off to bath now. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Please support me by giving this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Also, turn on notification alerts so no one upload a new video. See you!